Here we are exploring inequality and interval notations for sets of real numbers. Now all real numbers can be located on a number line or on the x-axis, which extends infinitely to the left and to the right. So as we of course move to the right-hand side on the number line, we're moving in an infinitely positive direction versus as we move to the left on the number line, we move in the infinitely negative direction. Now, sets of real numbers can be represented using both set builder notation, which incorporates inequalities, or we can use interval notation to represent these sets of numbers in addition to our graphical notation. So for the purposes of this review, we want to go ahead and let a, b, and x all be real numbers, and specifically such that the number a is less than the number b. So what this means is that when we're looking at the number line, if a is less than b, then a is always going to be to the left-hand side of that number b. So our first set of real numbers So our first set of all real numbers is the set of all x values that are strictly greater than the number a and strictly less than the number b. So we're excluding the endpoints here. So in interval notation, we want to make a note that these parentheses imply that x can get infinitely close to these numbers, but will never equal these numbers. And we call this type of interval notation an open set. So again, an open interval is implying that the endpoints of that interval are excluded. And we can see this with our graphical notation. Observe that we have open dots at the endpoints, implying that x can get infinitely close to these values, but will never equal them. Our next notation. So our next interval is what we call a closed interval. So notice the difference between case one and case two. Here we have square brackets, implying that x can equal these endpoints. And we can see this in our set builder notation. We have the set of all x values, all real numbers x, such that x is greater than or equal to a and less than or equal to b. So our square brackets or closed interval implies that x can equal the endpoints. So again, in a closed interval, this is implying that x can equal the endpoints. And we can better appreciate this with the corresponding graph. Notice here how we have closed circles at these endpoints, implying that x can equal a, be any number in between a and b, and can equal b. Our next interval. So our next interval is referred to as a half open or half closed set. And we can see here in our set builder notation how we have the set of all real numbers x such that x is strictly greater than a and less than or equal to b. So jumping over to our graph, we can see we have an open dot at the endpoint a, implying x cannot equal this endpoint, versus where we have this closed dot or closed circle at endpoint b. So our next interval, notice how we have switched the interval notation. Here, again, if we read this in our set builder notation, we can see that we have the set of all real numbers x, such that x is greater than or equal to a, but strictly less than b. And going over to our corresponding graphical notation, observe how we have the closed dot at point a and an open dot at endpoint b. Now, the remaining four interval notations are what we refer to as infinite intervals. So here we have the set of all x values that are strictly greater than a. And we can see this in our set builder notation as well as in our graphical notation. We know that x is strictly greater than a, so we draw an open dot at that endpoint implying x can get infinitely close but never equal it. And then notice how we've shaded the region, growing in an infinitely positive direction. Very similarly, we can also incorporate a closed bracket at this endpoint. 
And the only change with this next interval notation in case six is that we have the square bracket at endpoint A, implying that x could be any real number greater than or equal to endpoint A. So on our corresponding graph, we can see we have a closed dot at this endpoint. Now in case seven, we have another infinite interval. And this is going to be the set of all real numbers x such that x is strictly less than endpoint b. So if we look over at our graph, we can see that we have an open dot at the endpoint b, implying x can get infinitely close but never equal this endpoint. And then we've shaded the region growing in an infinitely negative direction. And last but certainly not least, So in our last interval here, we have the set of all real numbers that are less than or equal to endpoint B. So the only difference in our graphical notation or in our set notation as well is that we now have a closed dot at endpoint B, implying that x can equal this value.